Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video, what we're going to be going over is how to set up using input and key bindings inside of a widget. So as you may know, you can't actually use key bindings in widgets, so today I'm going to be going over how we can actually do that. So if I were to hit play, what you can see is that we're in the game. If I were to press tab, we're going to open up my inventory, obviously nothing in here, and if I press tab again, we're going to close it. Now there are many different ways to do this, you could just do this in the player blueprint, however the way I'm doing it here means we can now interact with this widget a lot more efficiently, which means because I've done it that way, we need to be able to close it inside the inventory, so I'm doing that a nice efficient way as well. So this is what we're going over today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. Also, I'm using new recording settings today, so I appreciate any feedback you may have on this video, whether it looks nice, whether it doesn't look good, whether you think there could be improvements here, there, or wherever. As again, I'm still just testing it all out, first time using this new setup, so I'm just trying to get it all working out perfectly. So sorry if it's not perfect just yet, and again, any feedback is greatly appreciated. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create this widget. So what I'm going to do is just go to my content browser and open my inventory widget I have here, I notice this is all I've got, just a canvas panel, background blur, and a border. Again, you can have in here anything you want. Once we've created this, we want to be able to open it. So to do that, we're going to go to our player blueprint, or wherever it is that you want to do this. So for me, that's going to be third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. And what I'm going to do in here is just right click and get my inventory action event, which I have. Then in this is where I want to open it. So above this, what I'm going to do is get event begin play and I'm going to create widget with the class being my inventory widget I just created a moment ago. And I'm going to promote this to a variable right, by right clicking the return value, hitting promote to variable, I'm just going to simply name this inventory UI like so. That's all I'm going to do. Then off of my input action here, I'm going to get that inventory UI and add to viewport. So I'm adding it when I want to open the inventory. So I'll put that there like so. Then I'm going to right click and get player controller. Out of here, I'm going to set input mode UI only with the in widget to focus being the inventory UI we just got there. And this is what's going to make it more efficient for interacting with this widget. And after this, I'm also going to come out the get player controller and set show mouse cursor. So we have the mouse cursor on screen like so. That you obviously don't need to do if you don't want it on screen, but in my case, I do. Now here is where you may normally also do maybe a flip-flop or a branch so that you can then add it to viewport and remove from parent as well. Again, I'm doing it differently. So we're going to compile, save that, and now we're going to go back into our widget which we want the input in. Now obviously you don't have to do everything I've just done there if this is different for you, but the next part you are going to want to do if you want to be able to use an input inside of your widget. So we're going to go to the graph, and what you may want to do is just get the inventory action event here, However, this isn't going to fire off and you can't enable input in here, that won't work. What we're going to do instead is you'll notice up in the top left we have functions 39 overridable. We want to override a function. So if you hover over it, you should get an override button here. We're going to press override and we're going to get the on key down event. This will allow us to actually use the on key down event for whatever we want. So if we press a button, it will work in here. So let me move out this return node. In key event, we're going to come out of this and get key, so whatever key the player has pressed. The return value of this, we're going to get equal equal, and then we're just going to use the key we want. So for me, that is going to be tab. Now you can use any key you want in here, just set it up, and if you want to use more than one, come out of the boolean, get an or boolean, and then come out of the get key and get another equal equal, connecting that in there, setting it to whatever you want as well, so let's say I like so, and you can add in as many of these as you want. Just add a pin and do it again, like so. I'm not going to bother with that, as I just want tab. Once you've done that, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that in here, like so, with the condition being the equal equal we just created there, or the or boolean for you. And out of true of this, what we want to do is basically just the opposite of what we did to put it on screen. So we're going to get player controller, doing set input mode game only now, not UI only, going into true of the branch. And out of get play controller again, we're going to set show mouse cursor to false, so unticked like so, like so. Then the final thing is we want to just obviously remove from parent, so we're actually taking this off the screen 
like this. Then out of the return node here, the return value of this, we want to just do handled. That means basically just success. Then I'm going to copy the return node, paste it down here, and connect that into false of the branch with the return value being unhandled, so essentially unsuccessful. And that is all we need to do. This will now allow us to actually interact with and use inputs inside of our widget. We'll compile and save that. And like I say, that's what the code we need to do. But one final thing to make this work is go back to the designer, select the root of your widget. So this top one here, so mine is inventory widget, and just make sure that is focusable is ticked. And that just means that you can focus inside of this widget. So you can click in it, you can use it, and you can use inputs in it. So we'll compile, save, close this, hit play, and this should now be working perfectly for us. So what I'm going to do is if I were to hit tab, we should see that I'm going to open up my inventory. I've got my mouse cursor and I can't move in my game because obviously I'm in UI only. And if I hit tab again, we're going to close it. Mouse cursor's gone. I can move again. This is working perfectly. So again, tab, tab, open and close perfectly like so. Again, the input is not in the player blueprint to close it. It's just in the widget. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is again set it up so we can use an input inside of the widget blueprint. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel a lot. So again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.